What is going- I, I thought I understood everything and now just like everything is- Why are we in a pool? Why are we in a pool? The sea bonnies. <laughs> it's, it's the it sea all bonnies. Comes back to that. It's always the sea bonnies. Hey guys, and welcome to GT Not Live, where, oh my gosh, so much has happened. So, I've been gone for the last two weeks, a uh, week and a half, roughly. Uh, we had VidCon, and then I immediately rolled that into a vacation with uh, Stefan Ali, uh, where we were kind of driving up and down the Mexican coastline doing a, a ruins tour, which was really awesome. Uh, Ali's really into ruins, he's really into beaches and swimming, and so this was basically like the, the week of his life. It was amazing, it was awesome getting to see so many of you at VidCon, we got to reconnect with old friends and new friends, and it was, it was just, across the board, it's been a phenomenal two weeks. But, of course, it happened at like the worst possible time, because while we were away, it feels like Everything and anything that has has happened, right? There are huge new games that we're supposed to stream now. There are all sorts of things that I'm supposed to uh, react to. But most importantly of all, probably the single biggest thing that could have happened did, maybe second biggest, because biggest would be like the release of Ruin. But the second biggest thing, which is the drop of the Five Nights at Freddy's movie trailer. I think this happened, when was it? Like. Uh, while we were in Mexico, and, and I saw it on my Twitter feed briefly. I, I was trying to stay off my phone, and so I don't really know a whole lot that's happened. I've just been, like, popping in for, like, five minutes at a time just to be like, oh, that's something I should make note of, that's something I should make note of. Now that I'm here, it is day one of me being back. I got back la last night at, like, 10 p.m., sitting down on the couch, and they're like, you need to react to the trailer. So that is what we are doing, friends, is theory crafting for the Five Nights at Freddy's official trailer. I have not seen this. Uh, and this is 100% true, I stayed intentionally blind to it. Uh, one, because the internet was, wasn't all that great uh, at the one hotel we were staying in. We stayed at a bunch of hotels, some of the internet was great, some of it was not. Uh, the day this dropped, we were in a place that was not great. But then also I wanted to save all reactions live. So, for copyright reasons, yes, I should probably not do, you could, you could just nod because I know your microphone's giving you a yes. hard time. Wow, very robusto there. <laughs> Very robusto. <laughs> yes! Um, so for copyright reasons, I am gonna just like pause it because we don't know if this is getting claimed if we react to it in real time, so we'll just go through inch by inch. That's the way we like to do it anyway. Guess what? My reaction is hyped, excited. Whoa! No way! They did this thing! And you'll probably see my real life reaction anyway as I do this, just in more fits and starts. So anyway, Five Nights at Freddy's official trailer! Let's do this! Let's solve the movie before the movie comes out. Let's go! Two minutes. So this isn't just like 30 seconds of footage we're reacting to. This is gonna be like a, a five-part mini-series based on how our reactions go. Five-part mini-series on the Five Nights at Freddy's two-minute trailer. Here we go. Got no audio. Fantastic. Hold up. There we go. Hi, this is Mike. I was just calling to see if that job that you offered was still available. Oh, yeah. hold, hold up. Okay, okay. That's that's Matthew Lillard, right? Right. I'm not. I'm I'm recognizing him as the man, Matthew Lillard. I I know him enough that this is what he looks like. Steve Raglan, career counselor. Here. Okay. So uh, originally, I was gonna pause it because. I just wanted to kind of draw comparisons to um, to Shining. Like, this feels very Shining-esque in, in terms of the color tone of it. And again, like, because now we're crossing into, like, out of video game land and into movie land, it opens up a lot of discussion around cinematography and filmmaking, which is cool, uh, in a way that, like, just theorizing about game trailers doesn't really. And... I think one of the exciting things about that is now all of a sudden for the first time you're really opening the door to a lot of like cinematic references and illusions and styles and things like this. Already you can get the, it's, it's this kind of desaturated palette. Um, you know, everything's each frame, right? Like this is a very cool tone Hi, frame. This is Mike. Then you go into this very kind of like dull, like warm frame. It's, it has this kind of like run-down, mundane quality to it. It's not highly vibrant, right? Uh, and that, 
feels very uh, Kubrickian in, in Shining, right? So The Shining is this movie all about a haunted hotel where he goes uh, and the family goes, right? And it's haunted, you know, it goes to a mundane place. So a hotel, in this case, a pizzeria, and it's a haunted place, presumably. Uh, Shining is, is possessed by spirits of dead people, including children. Um, and here, obviously, we're going to a pizzeria with dead children. Uh, even her hairstyle feel... I said I wasn't going to call on you because your microphone isn't... Th no, you should, though. Yeah, my, I, my only expertise is as a I, film major. I, I, yeah, I was, I was going to say, I feel like this is a missed opportunity. This is uh, Sam, Michigan grandpa, uh, hairy leg extraordinaire. Uh, he's behind the camera right now. Those are the only two qualities that I have. Yeah, Ash is, Ash is touring around in London right now. So, uh, you, so I'm not going to call on you for Five Nights at Freddy's lore. Good. Yeah, but, but I am. But I'm going to call, call on you for that. Okay, yeah, call me up for the Five Nights at Freddy's. I'll call on you for the for the uh, cinematography stuff. So, right? Am, am I just making this up, or like as a film person, you can attest to this, right? A hundred percent. You can see like very very neutral yeah. tones, yes. especially like Mike. A lot of browns, mm -hmm. not necessarily uh, super super vibrant, mm -hmm. and especially right now, the beginning of the movie. I assume yeah. he's going to be probably in like a. Uh, a state of like peril. He's looking for something. Yeah. He just doesn't have anything exciting. Mm -hmm. So the Browns, the neutrals, you're, you're spot on. Right, which which also, I mean, gives you a contrast, right, between the w real world outside of Freddy's versus when you enter the world of Freddy's, which we saw in the teaser trailer, you get much more saturated colors. You get the reds, you get the purples, because now you're in, you're, one, you're in the danger zone. It's separated from reality. And they're, it's a building that is possessed by entities that have control over it. So the color saturation tells you a story as you go through this, right? Yeah, it's, you know, land of fantasy and fun, right? Yeah, Bright no, exactly, right. colors, shiny, all this. Exactly. Yep. Um, real quick, just in case you haven't seen Shining, uh, Windy, right? Windy yep. Torrance, yep. I mean, so when I, I, I realized that I can actually show you parallels because this is a live computer screen. But like, <laughs> when I say like, oh, I'm getting Shining vibes, like, she looks very similar in, in terms of her styling to me. Like here, like it's it's almost one for one. Yeah. Like you have the same overalls, you have the same like green and white color palette. What's the when, when did the Shining take place? What's the time period? For that? It's got to be some kind of similar. When right? did the Shining take place? Uh, that was it. When? When is Shining is set in? Uh, plot Jack Twenty. I mean, is it just a present day? Type I, movie? They, they never, they the never really 80s. specify. I don't think. It's a good question. It's got that vibe to it, and I assume this is. I mean, this is your area now. Around the same time period. No, no, maybe. totally right. So let's see. So it was released in 1980, right? Mm -hmm. And so it gives you kind of like a 70s vibe. I get. Like I always got, I always got a 70s vibe from the hotel, but the hotel is also supposedly like kind of trapped in time. Yes, and the book was 77. Ooh, good one! Calling out the book. Mm. Interesting. So there you go. So wait, this, so this is a it's a it's a bit of an early reference, I guess. But then again, if this is eighty, no, because this is after it's closed down. So this would be because the pizzeria would be open in the eighties. So this is happening after the fact. So any any references here would actually be more dated in the real life. But anyway, okay, cool though. I already. I, <laughs> Already you can see like the creative team at work with this. So like I, I love the decisions that are made and they're intentional decisions, right? Like this isn't just, oh, we made a horror movie. It's like you can tell the thought that was put into the framing uh, of these and, and these creative decisions. I have no idea what this thing is in the background, by the way. Oh, uh, that's Mike on a chair. Oh, good one. Yeah, that is Mike. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, what is that? It's like the weirdest cat scratcher ever. Secret Mike lore. <laughs> Secret Mike in the background with the chair. I was just calling to see if that job that you offered was still available. Okay, th this seems like the one we got to talk about, though. Because Matthew Lillard, right, is confirmed to be uh, William Afton, right? Like, that, like yep. that is irrefutable. Yep. He uh, loves so to do hashtag Afton on Twitter. Right, he yeah. He's, uh, but he is all about it on Twitter, doing hashtag Afton. Or I always come back and this and that. So to see him here, not purple, not William Afton, not... So, Two, two options here, I guess, are one, in, in the book series, in the book series, uh, William Afton comes back later under a pseudonym, right? 
So uh, in, in the Silver Eyes novel, they go into the abandoned pizzeria, which is roughly the time period that this is set, right? It's, it's an abandoned pizzeria. It's long closed, right? And William Afton is still there lingering around the premises as like a security guard, um, as a night watchman. And he, is, he goes by the pseudonym uh, Dave Miller, right? So this could be him under his pseudonym, Dave Miller, uh, you know, except for the movie, he's Steve Raglan, right? Maybe. Um, so that's one option, right? And that would be based in kind of previous history in this franchise where, yeah, after he's suspected of child murder or looking to distance himself from the franchise or whatever, he kind of goes into hiding as this anonymous person, Dave Miller, or maybe in this case, he's Steve Raglan. Maybe. I feel, I feel like though that this has got to be a made up scene though, because you have Mike who may or may not be, and again, we don't know how closely this is adhering to the lore because we also don't know. It's never officially been confirmed that Mike Schmidt in the first game is actually the same Mike, Mike Afton that we play as later. Like it's, it's heavily suggested that we feel very confident. It's one of those theories that like we as a community have widely accepted, I feel like, but it's not hundred percent there. So the movie might be following a completely different lore line here where Mike might be completely unrelated to this. I don't think so, but it would be weird for Mike to call up maybe his father to get hired, right? The, the father that may, he does not know, the, maybe, I don't know, the father that he may or may not know to get hired onto a pizzeria that he has no connection with and is just like, it, it feels too circumstantial, right? That feels weird. So th the other option, just that I, I would throw out there, another possibility here is, is one, this is a pseudonym, two, this is just a made up scene. And this is him accepting a phone call, well, no, he would still be Steve. Yeah, he would, he's not a like, career counselor. Is it, there's a possibility that this is fake. I could, because, because again, doing film theory, I've seen movie trailers pull out a lot of stops to throw us off, right? At this point, like if you go back to Infinity War, the order of, like the scenes in which uh, Thanos gets his Infinity Gems, completely different. You know, this, the, the scene that they showed in all the trailers was like him with two, and all of us are like, oh, what order does he get him in? And what's he gonna get next? And this is, where is this in the movie? It was actually the final scene of the movie, one of the final scenes of the movie where he has all the gems, they just like Photoshop them out basically. And so I could see this potentially being a misdirect, right? Where you can do crazy thing, like this is a very easy thing to just like, paste over in a, in a video frame, right? Like this, we, it's so easy we could do it, right? Like this is one of those things where we could actually do this. So this might say William Afton something something or, you know, Dave Miller something, whatever it is, like whatever his real title is, owner of Fazbear, CEO, whatever. And they just pasted it over. So that way you get this shot and all of us are like, oh my gosh, what's it mean? Yeah, something else that's interesting about this, from a set design perspective, is yeah. he's got diplomas on the wall. I, right, I, I noticed, yeah, we're kind of covering up the one in the corner, but I noticed the other one. You can see the other one for sure. You don't have to move it. Up. Like, oh, whoa, oh, you can move it. Nice. Yeah. Okay. So he's either fully immersed in this new name, right. or he is Steve Raglan, or they just are, those are so blurred, and they say William Afton, and this is just uh, a digital. Yeah, a digital nameplate. edition or something, right? Because they know that when when Matthew Lillard's on screen, everyone's gonna freak out, right? Yes. Like they know, oh my gosh, it's William Afton, let's do this. But yeah, I noticed that too. The diplomas do, do not seem like the sort of thing that would be in like a pizza owner or like a, a historical, like his, his office, right? Mm -hmm. It does feel like a career counselor sort of thing. Hmm, it's interesting. I, I am highly suspicious of this. Sus. Yeah, a little bit sus. Yes. The security guard. Okay. I was just calling to see if that job that you offered was still available. Yes. The security guard. I won't take anything. This place was huge in the 80s with the kids. They shut it down years. I don't know what it is with O's and O's being red, but uh, for those of you who don't know or maybe missed it, I help am helping to produce a Broadway show right now as we speak. It is on Broadway right now. They just had a performance, like official performance number 40, uh, but it's performance number like 70 based on uh, how many previews we had. Anyway, uh, also in the marketing for that, it's, it's called Grey House. It's a great show. Uh, very dark, very mysterious. If you like FNAF, you would love this show. Um, it, it's got jump scares. It's got like lore that you have to solve and you want to piece together. Um, 
there's a whole video of me online uh, hosting a talk back with an audience full of theorists where we're just like figuring it out together. It was awesome. It was so much fun. It was my first time on Broadway. It was, it was so cool. But there too, the O is red. And, and, and the first thing that I kind of asked the audience when I did this talk back for Grey House was like, why, why did the creative team decide to make the O red? Because I don't know. I'm, I'm just kind of like helping advise things in the background as far as like how to talk to internet people and things like that. Um, and so the audience had some great theories. Just for the giggles, like that makes it more realistic, right? Not symbolic in any way. It's just interesting to me. Um, Steve. We'll take anything. So he's so he's desperate for a job. You start to see the saturated color peeking in now as we were talking about, like as we're entering the world of the restaurant. It was huge in the 80s with the kids. They shut it down years ago. The owner's just not ready to let it go yet. Okay. Owner's not ready to let it go. Work and you will sleep. I understand. She is so Wendy Torrance and shining, isn't she? Like her mannerisms. I will work and you will sleep. I understand. Very, very heavily inspired by like Wendy Torrance. Like again, if you have not seen The Shining, maybe this is going over your head. You should see The Shining just for your own personal edification. I'm a big believer in making sure that you see kind of like the the tent pole or like the the must watch canon of pop culture, right? Like I'm always trying to consume as much pop culture as possible. It's how I get inspired by theories, how or for theories. It's how I make connections that you might not initially think about. And so all of this, like, she gives me that vibe so, so heavily. I love that she's carrying a little stuff bare. A subtle little detail, I like that. But it already shows that she's going to have some sort of relationship with the animatronics and kind of teasing out the idea that, like, maybe they'll be, they'll be uh, friends to her or she'll be drawn to them in some way because she's, she's carrying this, right? And <laughs> Man, this looks great. It looks, it looks great. Like the set design and visually, like it, it, it really looks premium. You know, like, I, I mean, uh, and I said this during our, our teaser uh, reaction video, but I, I, I think the more shots that we see of this, the more and more it just hits me of how good this looks, right? I think when I first heard about a Five Nights at Freddy's movie getting released or uh, getting announced way back, like what, five years ago or whatever, um, I, I assumed it would be cheap, you know, like cheap on a budget kind of stuff, right? Like if you, I don't know if you've seen Wally's Wonderland or the Banana Splits movie, uh, two films that very clearly were released to kind of, I think, quickly capitalize off of the success that Five Nights at Freddy's was having in that moment. And as news was circulating, like, oh, Five Nights at Freddy's movie is going to get made. So they shoved out, you know, I think the studios shoved out these two kind of like cheap, quick to produce like, oh, it's mascot horror and like, look at the murderous animatronics or whatever to try and capitalize off of that. Uh, it's a film theory for another day. Um, but they have this kind of like cheapness about them, right? The, 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 the shots aren't thoughtfully put together. The sets feel very kind of superficial. There's not a whole lot of atmosphere. They're fine movies. They're fine. Uh, I enjoy them. They're kind of goofy. They're kind of dumb. They're weird. Uh, in, in a lot of good ways and, and all, it, like, they're cheesy B-horror movies, right? In, in all the best and worst ways possible. And this does not feel like that, or at least based on these opening shots, right? And, and again, trailers can do a lot to cover up the sins of a movie, you know? And, and again, that's another thing that I've seen a lot of in my life watching a lot of this stuff is trailers can sh create one movie and what you get presented with when you're actually in theater is very, very different. Um, but the fact that there are shots here that are able to be put together and show you this like atmospheric, you know, creepy, horror, haunted story, it, it's, it's really compelling. And it feels, you know, like, like I, I directly compare it to like Mithrigan, Megan, uh, that Blumhouse released, what, last year? Late last year? Early this year? I don't, who knows? Time is meaningless. It was early this year. It's, it's a great movie. It was February. It was their February release this year. Um, it was great. I, I liked Megan. I thought it was really fun. It's about an animatronic girl who goes on a killing spree, which I'm like, oh, it's, it's clearly them winding up for Five Nights at Freddy's, which is all about animatronic murder bots, right? Um, and it's very good. But it also, you know, again, production design-wise, it didn't feel as, as immersive as this, right? It didn't feel as lived in as this, right? Again, like there's so much 
to be said about a, what it feels like a world, right? Whereas Mithrigan and Megan felt like, oh, here are the places that we're shooting and we're just shooting in a forest because it's available and cheap and here we're shooting here, here, here. This feels like a world, which is really, really cool. Oh man. Oh man, all the lore in the background. Okay, <laughs> so much lore in the background. I'm trying to see if anything jumps out to me. Like you have your standards. Uh, you know, you're Freddy, you're Foxy. You're little girl holding the hand of someone. That pizza? Right, is it holding the hand? Like, or is this a second? No, this, is this a different? No, it's gotta be a different picture, right? Cause yeah, here's the, the bottom face. of that picture. And here's, yeah, this yeah. is, that's, I think that's Chica. That's big Chica face, that's big Chica. Who's she holding the hand of? That's weird. Um, in the books, Fourth Closet, uh, they go to like this nebulous like white space, uh, which is like purgatory, death, whatever it is, and uh, pictures are put back together uh, to remind the kids that they were killed by William Afton, and so it's a bunch of pictures of kids with the golden bunny suit. Um, so maybe that's, a, 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 you know, maybe it's a golden bunny or a bonnie or something. And because because in the pictures they're like, oh, look at their friends or whatever. And, and he's like, no, no, look at the pictures. He killed you or whatever. And remember, remember. And then they remember. Uh, cupcake, chica. A lot of chica. A lot of chica representation. Yeah. Which is interesting, right? Like you have a Freddy, you have a Foxy. This looks like Nightmare Fred. That looks like a Freddy, but it looks like a scary Freddy down in the bottom here. Yeah, it does. Right? It, it looks almost like one of the uh, pictures or posters from uh, FNAF 6 where they had a bunch of poster Easter eggs in some of the secret endings or whatever. That's that's weird. He looks kind of spooky there. But overall, I'm seeing a lot of Chica. Chica, 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 Chica. That looks like maybe a Foxy and a Bonnie. But far and away, like you're seeing a lot of yellow imagery and again i don't know if that is chica and it's if, if it's all meant to be chica if maybe some of these are are a golden bunny or william afton or something and has been again erased i i don't trust anything at this point in trailers i'm like oh because like right here right for instance this is a weird empty space right like it feels like something and you have a lot of this discussion with spider-man um uh no way home no yeah, No Way Home, uh, the, the multiverse one, uh, where you had people analyzing the trailers and seeing like, oh, this Spider-Man swing doesn't line up where he should be, which means that there are actually multiple Spider-Men in the scene or whatever. Uh, I, this is me doing that moment where this feels awkwardly empty. Yeah, and you know, it definitely does. And you know what else does? The, there's a picture right above it. This the one? No. Uh, that, oh, that's oh, this? completely blank. And look at the, the beam of the flashlight. Yeah. Do you see the bottom beam cuts right at that, like, the start of that picture? That's interesting. Like, very digitally painted over, and they yeah. didn't replace the beam. Yeah. So that seems like yeah. there's going to be something on that picture. Yeah, you can, yeah, you're absolutely right. Hundred, good call out, actually. I, I can't believe I didn't see that. You're absolutely right. This has definitely been removed in some way. That's interesting. So that tells me... What? Who, who, are, who then are they removing? It seems like it has to be Springtrap, right? It feels like it has to be Yellow Bond, like, because who else would it be, right? Like, unless it is a Golden Freddy, but that doesn't really, like, that wouldn't make any sort of sense. It has to be Springtrap. So, because they, they're happy showing everyone else. Everyone else is here, represented in some way. You got a Bonnie, a Foxy, a, a Freddy, a Chica. So it seems like that must be either a reference to missing children's incident or something, maybe a puppet. I guess puppet is the only other one it could be who's not there, like a, a security marionette or whatever. I feel like that is one step too far for this franchise. Like if you're already introducing people to the Five Nights at Freddy's canon to introduce like, oh, and also here's the possessed like weird puppet feels like a step beyond. But yeah, so I feel like these two might have spring trap removed. I think that's a good, good call out. Ah, oh, so oh, the three can, there it is. All you have Employees of the month. That's that's an Easter egg waiting to happen, isn't it? Oh. Is that Daco? No, are you kidding me? No! Are you kidding me? 
Yes, sir. Yo! <laughs> That's awesome. That is so cool. Hold up here. I want to get close. Like, like I can't. Oh man, who? Oh, and that's that's Ryan. I can definitely make out Abe and Ryan. Is Razbowski in there? Is that Gerard the Completionist? <laughs> <laughs> no, like right, it's, right. It's he's just he's just, right. right. I'm trying to. It's it's very small right here. Yeah. Um, shoot, did, I didn't pull up Photoshop in advance here. We're gonna have to cut this probably during the awkward, like, I'm gonna open up Photoshop because it never works. So who do we got? Okay, so this is definitely 8-Bit Ryan. Correct. I definitely recognize him. That's definitely Docco. I'd, I'd recognize, what's going on, guys? <laughs> Anywhere. This is what I said. This looks like Gerard. But that's also just because he has a large black beard. <laughs> And so Gerard has a large black beard. And also like kind of like the, the dark hair, but who else? So do you, do you know who everyone is? Like uh, have, have, obviously we're coming, I'm coming into this a little bit late cause I was on vacation. So do you know who everyone is? Yes, I am far less honorable than you. I have watched this already. I mean, I'm glad cause <laughs> it's kind of your and Ash's job. So I'm glad that you did. Yes. Yes, so, uh, who, so who's who? Bottom right. You yeah. nailed it, eight bit Ryan. Okay, I, yeah, I recognize that that comb over, not, not comb over, but like the the the, the like fly. highlighted hair. Yeah, up and to the left. Up and to the left, of him. Daco. Daco, yeah. Perfect. Uh, above Daco, is Baz. Baz. Oh, you mean um, eight bit Ryan? Like formerly when they uh, eight bit had a, the the two of them together, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Uh, down and to the left. Yes. I believe is Fusion Z Gamer. Is that what he looks like? Yes. I, 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 has, he, has he done a face reveal? Like, on one hand, I'm like, I would expect to see him here. But as I'm sitting here thinking, I'm like, I don't think I've ever seen his face. Yeah, I don't think they could use just the picture of Foxy. <laughs> it's a Foxy is employee of the month. Wait, what is Fusion? Fusion. Fusion. There is Fusion Z Gamer FNAF uh, images. Uh, here, Fusion Z Gamer IRL. Oh, I, oh, I see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so there... And where are we at? Here. Oh yeah, like a little, like kind of short, short hair, more like a circular face. Yeah, I see that, yep. And then below him is DJ Sturf. No, that's clearly Gerard the <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is it really? His final does, does DJ Sturf have like a massive beard at this point? Hold up. DJ Sturf. Oh, I'm glad that he's here. Oh, he, I forgot he does have his beard. It looks like Linus. <laughs> he does look a lot like Linus Tech Tips, doesn't That's he? That's awesome. I forgot that he does wear the beard. That's, I, see, it's so funny because I always associate him with this, but even when we did things with him, he had a beard. I just always associate him with his, like, avatar. Oh, wow. This is also a much darker than... That's why I thought Gerard, because Gerard, for those of you who don't know, here, I'll, I'll show you. Gerard, Mr. Completionist. Like... Yeah, I mean Right, that's... you see, like like this right here is like quintessential Gerard. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, I'm deep in the video games right now. And so when I see this, where like kind of big, bushy, very dark black, that's immediately where I went to, as opposed to this, which is much kind of like lighter brown or almost like reddish. So, okay. That's cool. Good. Oh, good for them, man. I mean, you know, <laughs> it's like, boy of the month. Whatever. <laughs> not, not hating or anything. I'm glad. Good for them. So happy for them. Yeah. Good yeah. For them. People getting represented. All right. Here we go. All you have to do is keep your eyes on the monitor. Welcome to Freddy Fazbear. Okay, this is the video that we saw. Here, so before we hop into the video, because we've, we've seen this bit, so. All or not seen, but do. like. So you got your first, first dollar, first ten dollars. That's an old one. Uh, you got this. It looks like an old, just an old PSA. This one, this uh, the style of this actually reminds me of a lot of. I don't know if you've seen this circulating on Twitter, but there's a lot of like old like user manuals that circulate around like old animatronic like Chuck E. Cheese animatronics or things like that. That this feels very much of that kind of art style and that look. Uh, call out to the old, you know, celebrate uh, FNAF one poster. So it's cool that they are just like it's literally here. It is from the video game. 
That's cool. I love that they are actually setting up the game mechanic here. Like it is literally watch the monitors. That's really funny. You got the signature cup. Good, good attention to detail. Obviously, since Scott was involved with it, it, it makes sense that that would be, you know, a, a particular point that he would focus on. Um, but that's, that's pretty cool. Uh, oh, that's something in front of them. I'm like, what is this weird monitor split down the middle, but kind of, but no, it's just a big walkie talkie. Okay. Just keep your eyes on the monitor. Wait, as they were flashing up, I, that feels like a good moment. So you got Foxy peeking out already. That's interesting. So it, it, he doesn't have to be uncovered or something. You've got a couple of shots of the hallways, dining room. I'm assuming that's maybe dining room or booths. Nothing a whole lot there. Okay, I just didn't know if there was going to be something popping. This is the weird one. The fact that there's already a flashlight on Foxy and that he's already peeking out. The monitor. Welcome to Freddy Fazbear's, where fantasy and fun come to life. Okay. <laughs> I feel like I feel like that's a mood. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> I feel like that's every FNAF YouTuber before they start playing whatever the new game is. It's like, okay, roll the camera, <laughs> start the game. <laughs> Can we clip that? And when ruin drops, we're just gonna start our stream or video or whatever. It's like, okay, <laughs> we'll we'll just recreate it. <laughs> Okay. Okay. <laughs> That's awesome. So good. Oh, is this the, okay? This is the new one, right? The new character. We must be new security guard. Can I uh, help you, officer? So interesting. He's wearing his security uniform here, but here he is not. Right? He's just wearing a hoodie here. Is on the monitor. It's not, and it's not a security hoodie. Welcome to Freddy Fazbear. I help you, officer. Right? Yeah, those are different. Those are definitely different. One is one is black, one is gray. So this is again presumably happening on multiple nights, or different nights. Maybe perhaps five nights. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> With a sixth bonus night, four twenty <laughs> mode. Um, but yeah, so clearly this is like night one, and then maybe on night two. Uh, she comes in. Have you met them? Okay, this is Vanessa, yeah? Uh, I believe she's credited on IMDb. She's blonde, like in Security Breach. So, great, we're definitely convoluting the lore. Uh, oh, a blonde girl named Vanessa who's a security guard? Or a police officer in this case. Oh, man. It's, it's, oh, man. <laughs> oh! It's, it's Jeremy. Vanessa is the new Jeremy. <laughs> Vanessa is the new Jeremy is what I'm saying with this. Is Scott's like, well, we've done the Jeremy thing enough. Let's do it with Vanessa. Make them all blonde, vaguely attached to security services. Ugh. See? New security Let me guard. guess, her nickname is uh, Vanny. Have you met them yet? Her favorite's Bonnie. Met who? Them. Cool. They look great. Okay, that was a lot. I, I know we're Guard. going through this. Can I, uh, space. Help you, officer? Have you met them yet? Okay, so you're starting to see. See, this is at their house, though. So this is something that uh, the girl, Abby, uh, is her name in the movie. This is something that Abby drew, not at the restaurant. Unless he brought it home, but that doesn't make sense. So you have. This is Abby? Mm hmm. So you would have, maybe this is, oh, maybe this is Abby, this is Mike and Vanessa? Yep. Right, oh, because she's in a blue, she's got a security guard, and that's just, yay, it's my brother, Foxy, Chica, Bonnie, yeah, huh. Anything, anything with the letters? I see yeah. a bunch of letters, yeah. and I'm, I see a bunch of letters, and I'm like, oh, it's going to spell something. The left one spelled B-Day. It does spell B-Day. It's got a little smiley face up here. Fom. <laughs> Fought. We solved Fought. it. Fought. <laughs> right. Nailed it. <laughs> Nailed the lore. Met who? Oh, um. Nebraska? Why Nebraska? Nebraska. Yeah, no, it's definitely Nebraska. Mm -hmm. 
Someone wants to go on vacation. <laughs> I don't know. It's, that's weird. Uh, Utah, because Utah is usually where these things are set in the in the book, in like again in the book canon. So maybe uh, because it's an alternate universe or whatever, because it's taking place somewhere else. Like maybe this one's set in Nebraska as opposed to Utah. It's one of those states that people are like, that's a state that exists, but I don't know anything about it. Like I assume nothing happens there. So the murderous child animatronic pizza restaurant. Sure, let's go for it. Oh yeah, there's there's definitely a clear Nebraska there. <laughs> Sleeping on the job. Okay, these are also multiple shots. Headphones, headphones. No headphones. Different hoodie? He looks like he's wearing the Game Theory hoodie. I'm just saying, he looks like he's wearing that Game Theory hoodie. Like That would be awesome. Gen 1 Game Theory hoodie. Mike is a Game Theory fan? <laughs> Get out of here! Get out! That's awesome. Oh, huh. Hmm. So this is for Ruin, right? So I'm glad we actually ended up pausing. I wasn't planning on pausing on this one. Um, looks to be like maybe a, uh, a medicine bottle or something. But here you have this is this is the thing in Ruin that they were teasing on Security Breach TV, where you can. Assume, we were like, what is this? Is it a video game? It looks like the camera controller, right? And the camera switcher. So uh, this is, I mean, outright confirmation of what that is then. Yeah, so those are for PTZ cameras. Oh! Pan, tilt, zoom, which are specifically like security cameras that are stationary. Yeah. That you'll put in the corners that you need to be able to look around. Yeah. So that's exactly what that is. There you go, pan, tilt, zoom. Yeah, you just knew that? Or did you look into it? Uh, part of my film major. Really? Yeah. Huh. See, there you go. I should have asked you about this weeks ago. Then when, when on Security Breach TV, I was like, here's the thing. And everyone's like, what is this? I mean, I thought it was a camera controller. I just never looked into it because I'm like, this doesn't help us with the theory. But there you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, PT, PTZ, mm -hmm. pan, tilt, zoom. Like it. So, but anyway, notice he does not have headphones. Unless they rotoscoped his ear in, which does look oddly flat. I don't know. I, I don't know much about Peter Malark's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> He'll always be Peter Malark to me. Okay, don't eat those berries, PETA. Don't do it. But his ear does look kind of like oddly flat. So they might have like, again, rotoscoped or like photoshopped. Rotoscoping, basically the like video version of Photoshop, like yeah. for lack of a better word. Uh, they photoshopped the headphones off of him in this moment. Oh man, oh man. There's Nebraska, super clear. Yep. This is... Blurry. So is this a dream sequence then? Or is this actually haunting? I can see it being either way. Prize counter. Creepy as the heck masks. Love it. <laughs> Promoting some new merch. Very exciting. Oh, you finally get to see him perform! No, I didn't think that. I, didn't, I wasn't sure if you would actually get to see him perform. That's awesome, actually. Shutting off the circuit breaker. In the 80s, cool. kids went missing. Very good, man. I love it. The police searched Freddy's top to bottom. Hello? Oh, man. They never found them. Red eyes! It's got the red, got them red eyes! <laughs> See, they're always breaking down. You always need to repair them. I like that. In the 80s, kids went missing. The police searched Freddy's top. I feel like, was it the Suicide Squad trailer that really tapped into the whole, like, editing to the music and, like, doing, like, a, a classic song or whatever? And I feel like Suicide Squad was the one that really... I mean, people have been doing it forever, but, like, right. that was the one that everyone's like, whoa, what an awesome song, and they edited this awesome trailer. And everyone's like, Suicide Squad's gonna be, like, the coolest movie ever. <laughs> and then it wasn't. But every... <laughs> but then every movie trailer afterwards, like, no edit to the song and like make it real real sick that way. I mean, it's the best. We, uh, back in the days when I was actually editing Game Theory or when I was more involved in the editing of Game Theory 2, I would do the exact same thing because um, it lends it so much polish and it feels really clean that way. I love it and it makes it so much more dramatic. To bottom. Hello? They never found them. Okay, so this is her being attracted to the, the animatronics or whatever like we called out earlier. Um, she's wearing a sky. 
seems like it's meaningless, but I just, again, costumes matter um, when you're talking about filmmaking and stuff. So just why would she be wearing Sky? I don't know, in a sense. That's why the place. Who are you? Huh. Are they, are they breaking in? Huh. Weird, I don't know. Okay, so there's something interesting they never found on them. that shot. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but the, the Harley Davidson, it's a great motorcycle. Quality yeah, was, motorcycle. Oh, yeah. yeah. The t shirt on the young boy on the left. Yeah. Really? Yeah. It, it I, is, I, have, I can't, there's it, no world. It's Midnight Motorist. No, get out of here. Are you kidding? Get out of here. Are you kidding me? I am not. No. Unless way. the internet lied. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, could be. Oh god. Okay, hold up. Here's the, I, I I don't know, man. I I got it. I got. I, it. I will take your word for it. And I'm sure that there's like an AI upscaling, like derezzing thing that we could do with this. But I I believe the internet's done it. I believe that was a uh, a fun app original. Really? I think I saw it from him on Twitter. Nice. Oh, good one. Good spotting. That's awesome. I mean, I feel like that would just be a reference or an Easter yeah, egg. Yeah, I don't think it means anything. I don't think it means it's anything, cool. but that's, that's cool. That's, yeah. a, that's a cool reference if that's the case. That's awesome. Doesn't help me figure out who the heck they are, but sure. Great. <laughs> awesome. It's like a bike gang, like a biker gang or a street gang or something. I don't know. Uh, breaking in? By the place shut down. Oh, yeah. Wow. Ghost oh yeah. So her. so they so okay. So in every horror movie, right? You have your uh, you have your uh, basically your your fodder for the grinder, right? The the people like the red shirts, right? If you're talking about like Star Trek or whatever, the people who are there to ultimately show that the threat is real, right? And and to give you the, some scares and and some threat and like every horror like Saw has the expendable people of uh, uh, Friday the 13th and stuff like that. All there's always the expendables. These must be the expendables. So I know the older gentleman, I don't remember his name, yeah. but I remember a big fuss was not fuss. A big like people went crazy because he was cast as Hank in the movie. Okay. So people were very excited about that saying he was going to be the Henry Oh, interesting. But I was gonna say it doesn't seem like that. I don't think it doesn't from this. I, I was gonna say I don't, I, don't, I don't think it's, I don't think that's it. <laughs> Maybe it's, I don't think Henry is coming in with a bat baseball <laughs> with a baseball bat to come <laughs> break up the place. And the place shut down. Yeah, I mean, this shot to me says, "Oh, this is this crew." is the meat for the grinder. You set know, the like stakes. they're setting the, yeah, setting the stakes, exactly. <laughs> that shot is the classic, like, oh someone died. Ghost children possessing giant robots. <laughs> Thanks for the heads up. Technically they're animatronics. Yeah, that's funny. Okay, oh. so we got a better shot of our ghost kids. They're ghost children possessing giant robots. That one's foxy. You can't <laughs> If it's Solved. Like, right, if the red shirt and red hair didn't make it clear enough, let's also give him the fake hook. <laughs> and also let's cut to the shot of Foxy. Mm, match cut. Love it. Chica's looking thin. Is it, if this is Chica, that's just looking thin. Or is that his peg? What would that be? Oh, there. Yeah, there's our, there's our kids. So you got your... Yeah, so you got your Bonnie, your Foxy, Freddy, Chica, and then Golden Freddy, Cassidy, Ventral Spirit. Thanks for the heads up. Technically, they're animatronics. What do they want? They want to make her the end, like them. Bobby! Tell me how to stop them. <laughs> oh! Oh, 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 that's awesome. Oh, that was great. Oh, hand jumping out of the mouth. That's legit. That is a great scare. Technically, they're animatronics. Okay, so there he is. We saw that in the first one. Got a, a flash frame here. Cool. Just Foxy. I didn't know if it was just hanging out. Always being around the fun. Any interesting posters? This, might, this, this seems like a copy of the thing that was in the, uh, in the security office, right? Yep. 
That seems similar. On the phone. I love that, like, here's the main action I should be looking at, and yet I'm not interested in it. I'm just like, off oh, to, like, what's this poster over here? That guy looks like he might be wearing purple. I don't know. What do they want? They want to make... It, I wonder if they took the note. I, I, again, I'm wondering if this is one of those where, similar to the Sonic movie, where everyone reacted, like, negatively to the trail or to the teaser of Sonic. He looks disgusting. His eyes are too small, and he's got these, like, human teeth, and this is gross. I wonder if everyone's reaction to the red eyes caused them to change the eye. Like, I'm wondering if this would have been a red eye scene and is now a yellow eye scene or something like that. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised. Because um, that's an easy fix to do uh, pretty quickly to make sure that you're appeasing, you know, the, the fans. who It's it's a it's a minor graphical thing. I, I wouldn't be surprised if this was originally a red eye scene. They wanted me. Okay, there it is. So this here's our wall. Yeah, and, and we know that this is our wall, for sure. Yep. Because there's the girl, there's the Chica face, there's Chica next to someone. That one's still blank. They're both still blank. They're both still blank, which is weird, because here we have a shot of Golden, Golden Bonnie holding all five kids' hands. And, and Balloon Boy. Oh, no. Hmm. And a security camp. Is, right? Is that a security camera? It looks like it. it look, right? It looks like a thing coming out of a wall. Either that or it's a house with a tunnel under it, which is FNAF 4. I mean, it does look like a normal house with a tunnel. Or a security camera. One of the two very distinctly <laughs> different things. But also, I could see it being... Oh, let me get close to it. I don't know. It... it it has a door and two windows. And it seems like it has a tunnel under it. Are you kidding me? No. No way. Ha! Huh. Also, um, I think this is pretty funny. The, and I think this is, again, like references or Easter eggs, because, you know, when they're crafting these things, especially with Scott's supervision, he's like, hey, throw in all the Easter eggs possible. Uh, the unhappy rainbows here. Uh, is a reference to Chica's magic rainbow, uh, which is from FNAF World, where the final boss, or like one of the final bosses, is this evil rainbow character. Um, so that, to me, feels very, very Chica's magic rainbow. Uh, balloon boy, man, God, balloon boy. Fish? Just randomly fish. Sea bonnies. Sea bonnie! Oh, man. <laughs> Yeah, is that what I it hate is? that I know that. I, I was going to say, I, that's a deep cut for someone who knows nothing about FNAF lore. Well done. <laughs> See, Bonnie. I'm so sorry that that's <laughs> infected your brain at this point. Uh, wait. Oh, no. Where'd it go? Shoot. Why'd you disappear? I don't understand how to use paint. <laughs> clearly, <laughs> clearly paint is too advanced for me. Um, okay, what do we got? Th this is a wall of Easter eggs. You got a pizza, just random pizza guy holding on to another pizza guy. Uh, you got Freddy on stage alone. There's the shots that we saw earlier. Chica, Chica. I feel like the, the fact that there's not many families and kids feels important. That kid has a name. Yeah, this is David. David. Right? A, a mom? Looks more motherly. She's wearing mom shoes. <laughs> Clearly, she's wearing mom <laughs> shoes and mom capris. She's a mom. And Damon, what's he holding? Is it tickets? Is it a chain around his foot? <laughs> I was going to say saxophone. I think tickets <laughs> makes more <laughs> sense. Saxophone, yes. David and his iconic saxophone. Well, he wants to join the band. <laughs> this epic sexy saxophone. <laughs> pretty, 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 pretty. Oh, okay. So this is, it's interesting that there, yeah, there's a couple families depicted here. David. David. Huh. FNAF in space. Yeah, th this is Chica's magic rainbow. David's interesting. I, th I think this has got to, I think you got to say that this is a house. I think you nailed it, because the thing to the right is a swing set. Like the bottom right, right yeah, it. this is the swing set. This is house, window, window, and t underground tunnel. Oh, get out of here. Are we doing FNAF 4, too? Like, I mean, they've clearly set this up, and I, I, the way that they've talked about this in media is that, oh, we're setting it up to be a trilogy of movies, right? Like, I think everyone at this point, whenever there's a large franchise release, you expect it to be a trilogy. So I'm not surprised that at some point we might go there. 
I'm surprised that we would get a reference to it here. And also in a kid's drawing is weird to me. Um, just from an in-universe standpoint. That is, that's huge. Has anyone talked about this online? Not that I've seen. Really? Yeah. That seems huge to me. This... Could any of these be Vanessa? Again, I'm just saying, like, blonde. This looks like there's a blonde with earrings here. When Bonnie. Random star guy. I don't know if that's a reference to, like, Sun and Moon from Security Breach or just, like, random character that got thrown in. FNAF in space. Launching off. Melting cupcake. A lot of rainbows. A lot of rainbow imagery. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, you got a uh, spring trap or a spring bonnie. That's cool. All right, huh, interesting. That is a huge wall of lore right there, okay. We her like them. Bobby! Tell me how to stop them. Make her like them. So the animatronics want to... Make her like them. Huh, so the animatronics are after her? That's an interesting choice. Hmm. Tell me how... Oh man, running through lore again. So this is a completely different setting though. What is this? You're out in public. Why am I out in public? Tell me how to stop <laughs> Oh, that is a good jump scare. It's too late. <laughs> no! Whoa, oh my gosh, they're, they're showing a lot. They're showing a lot in this great, oh my gosh. Holy gee. Okay, so that's the, I, that's the one thing that I, I will flag about. That, like, they might have, Are they showing too much? This shot doesn't look great. I gotta say. This, this, <laughs> this, this, okay, just that we landed on this shot. I, I, I've, I've, I feel like I've complimented this movie enough that I can say this shot right here. Not, not, not doing it, man. This is, this is like a... This is like one of the screenshots that got leaked of Security Breach back before Security Breach launched where they're, everyone's like, is this really what the final gameplay looks like? That's the hardest album cover of 2023. <laughs> <laughs> it's not great. I hope that this is a rough of it or that this gets cut or something. This is not, this is not doing it. In a movie where a lot looks really good, this does not look great. I gotta say, uh, this should not have passed final inspection. It is interesting though, <laughs> that now that I've stopped on it, uh, that the cupcake is gone. Uh, I don't know what it means. Uh, maybe it means that the, the cupcake is separate from Chica in some way. But, uh, but yeah, the fact that the cupcake is gone is interesting in this shot. But otherwise, the less said about this shot, the better, I feel like, for the sake of the movie. Thanks for the heads up. They're giving up. They're, they show a lot. I'm, I can't believe they showed Springtrap. I thought the only reference to Springtrap that they were going to do was that shot right there. I'm like, oh, that's your Springtrap reference. This this shot, that is so good. That is great. That right there is worth the price of admission. That is horrific. Someone getting picked up. Uh, heavy boots. Is that Abby? Is she wearing heavy boots like that? It would make sure makes sense that she's standing on a chair. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah, so something. she'd be standing on the chair with her face right now. The shot still isn't the best. Kind of like with the animatronics looking so good, this one kind of looks a little cheap. It's too late. Oh, so good. But then you have moments like that, and you're like, "Oh, that looks great." <laughs> Can't believe they're coming. <gasps> <spring trap. laughs> this is not one of the kids that runs away. This is a different kid. But we're in the same forest. Hold up. I know we've done this like five hundred times. Oh wait, I don't have to. I don't have to do that. It was in here. Purple shirt, red shirt. What do they want? They want to make her like them. Bobby. Tell me how to stop them. <laughs> I was just trying to see if there was like a connection. It's 
Purple shirt? No, purple shirt. He's got red shirt. I was I was wondering if this was maybe David, or something like just to make a connection, but it doesn't look like it. Not great. Yeah. <laughs> so who's dead here? What is this? We're in a living room and someone's dead. Past that, why? Why? That that's weird. Like that's weird to me. Yeah, this makes me think of the house drawing. Yeah, maybe it's like a flashback to the house or something, or maybe yeah. I don't. Are we? There's no way we're going into the house. Like, um, we're going out of the pizzeria and into like the after. There's no way. This is weird. Why would we see someone? Knocked out, passed out, or dead in a like residential area. And it's a and it's a female who wears chunky heels. So it doesn't that doesn't strike me as is that um uh the other character IMDB uh FNAF movie. Let's see if I can find this real quick. Cause I know that there was it's it doesn't that doesn't strike me as Elizabeth. Um what was the, there was a, there was a female. Oh, she was the top name on the left column. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Female villain. Yeah. Only list is female villain. Mary Stuart Masterson, right? Female villain. I mean. I mean, it seems like she just got dunked on, though. Right? That Right? But who else would it be? I don't think it would be Vanessa. Because no. I don't see Vanessa, the, like, cop stereotype, walking around in chunky heels. No. I mean, it's got to be her. It's, right, it feels like this has got to be her, but why? why? Why would we be at a how? Maybe she comes in and gets attacked by the animatronic. Like, I don't know. That that's weird though. The fact that we're seeing like chaos or 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 murder. It's maybe not murder. It's like knocked out or something at a residential house is weird. Weird. Okay, Vanessa gets sent to the hospital, apparently, okay. It's weird that they go right from that shot to this shot, too, in right. terms of storytelling. Because right. Because I'm, I'm with you. I don't think this is Vanessa. I would agree. But I think they're trying to make you think it is yeah. in a very not-so-great way. In an editing way, yeah. Right. Yeah, that, if you're matching the cuts or, like, trying to cut it together to tell a story, yes, I would agree. But I don't think that matches character-wise. No, I agree. Right. I think they're trying to yeah. deceive, but they're not doing it right. Sure. Why would... So she got attacked by animatronics then, I guess? Mike is beating up someone in broad daylight. What is going? I, I thought I understood everything and now just like everything is, why are we in a pool? Why are we in a pool? The sea bonnies. <laughs> it's, it's the it sea all bonnies. comes back to that. It's always the sea bonnies. And now, and he's getting beaten up by a security guard now. What? Is this? What would this be? I, I don't even know. Like, is it like origin story or something? I don't like. Right, it kind of. Yeah, I seems, feel like this has to happen at the beginning of the movie, right, which would get him fired, and then he needs a job. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, so he gets fired from something, gets beaten up by security. And well, he is the security there. I think. Wait, who? Mike. No, Mike is. Mike is throwing hands. Oh. Oh, no, that because I thought that this was Mike getting beat up. No, oh, but this is Mike getting... Oh, no way. Oh, so he just, like, goes ham on someone, gets fired. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, and then he's desperate for a job. And then he's desperate for a job, and then he becomes security guard at Five Nights at Freddy's. Or, and, 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 you know, <laughs> at Five <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Five Nights at Freddy's, obviously. Yeah, that's it. I think you're right. That's... So this is like origin of Mike, which leads him to the restaurant, which chaos ensues. Interesting. This is, why would he do, beating up a crib. Maybe he like takes justice too strong into his own hands or whatever. It's a good shot. It's a good like overhead shot. I like that. Okay, close the vents. Spring trap. Wow, we get to see you really up close, don't we? Looks good. Looks real good. I, again, I'm surprised that we're seeing him. And he's got a knife, which is more than like any FNAF game at this point. Like, hey, we're actually allowed to show weaponry in a, in a movie. He's all beat up. He's locked in. What, what the 
heck is this thing? Is this what is this thing? I I don't know, man. I don't know what this the remnant extractor. I I don't get it. This must be a William Afton murder device, I guess. Right? It has it strikes to be. Me as generic horror. Like, Saw trap. Ooh, yeah. Right. I mean, it, it's a great visual. Oh yeah. It absolutely. works real well for trailers. From a lore standpoint, it's like, ow, oh, ow, oh, I got nothing, man. This, this is not a book thing, this is not a game thing, this is a movie thing. Deal with it. Where to? Are you kidding me? No! No! That's, that's amazing! Oh, God! Why do I always get the weirdos? <laughs> what? No way. No way. Title looks great, by the way. What? He's in the. T Where to? Okay, Corey. Corey. Corey X Kenshin, in case you don't watch his channel. He's like. Nah! That's so cool. I mean, I mean, I think we all knew that people were getting cameos, but like. That's nuts. And in the trailer? That's huge. Good for him, man. Good for you, Corey. That's awesome. That is so, so cool. Also, I'm impressed by the fact that the base fee of a taxi cab is $1.50. Because <laughs> I just took a cab last night and the base fee was like three fifty. So the times there are changing. So Why do I always get the weirdos? <laughs> that is a weirdo. Good for you, Mal. Good for him, man. That's awesome. Oh, I'm so hyped. I'm so hyped for him. That's so cool. Oh. Oh, that's so cool. What, what is this shot? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Like, there's a lot. There's a lot to unpack. I'm very excited for Corey. I'm definitely a little jealous of Corey. But all that being said, what, what is... So, they're in a taxi cab. Okay, so this reinforces what we talked about earlier, which is that Abby and the animatronics have some sort of weird friendship, but also they're trying to, like, seduce her, lure her into being an animatronic. I don't get that plot point. That's weird. Um, but Freddy, Golden Freddy specifically, right? I mean, it seems like based on the weathering of missing an ear, missing an eye, having one eye lit. Also, Sans Eye. There's so many references. <laughs> He's got the sans eye going. Uh -oh. uh, Golden Freddy is sans. <laughs> no. But uh, what is he doing in a tax? What? And how huge? Is this the right size? Yeah, I, I mean, that's... I am, that's so, I am so befuddled <laughs> by so many things in these final seconds of this trailer. I have so many thoughts about all the things in the final moment of this trailer. So... Golden Freddy exists, I guess, and he's taking a taxi cab with Abby. Some, I, I don't even know. Like, why would an animatronic have a reason to leave the house? Not the house, the, the, the pizzeria, the, like, restaurant. Why would I, what? What? I am so confused. I am so confused. But I, I, I guess it's confirmation that Golden Freddy is her bud, and that and that does then that would also suggest that the final kid is in fact Golden Freddy, right? So I in in there I'm like, oh, I don't know if that's vengeful spirit. I don't know if it's Golden Freddy. I don't know, like, and it, who knows? It could be a combination of all those things. But it does seem to suggest that the fifth character, the one who does not have an explicit like hat or hook or whatever, that is Golden Freddy right there. Um, wow, 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 wow. Good for Corey. Final shot of the trailer, like of the official trailer. That's awesome. That's so cool. That is so, so cool. Um, what the heck? Why, why, would it, why would an animatronic be in a tag? I, I, and it's so big, Sam. It's, it's got, so big. <laughs> I mean, he had to be sitting in there like with his knees all the way right? to him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> logically, it doesn't make any sense. Like, like, there's not physical space there. Like, if his head is the size of a seat, his body, he's got it, like, he's got to, like, fold up. I don't know if anyone ran the logistics of this. This is, here, 
Forget all... I'm gonna throw away our entire programming strategy on the channel at this point for game theory, and I'm just gonna put a fast track. I'm gonna put Tom onto... Can an animatronic this size fit into a taxi cab? <laughs> they had to push the seat all the way forward, his, and his feet are still like, ah, just take it. <laughs> hey guys, let me Freddy. Oh, this is nuts. October 27th, all right. I mean, it's gotta be he went to... It's gotta be related to the house, right? The, the lady on the ground? I guess. That, Fre that golden Freddy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I don't think your logic is necessarily wrong here. Golden Freddy, spirit animatronic, Jumbo, <laughs> hops into a taxi cab in Nebraska or somewhere <laughs> with a small girl, rides to a house, random house, and... <laughs> just clocks one into the female villain of the Five Nights at Freddy's movie. <laughs> Leave her alone! <laughs> Kellen Goff as voice of Golden Freddy. <laughs> Leave her alone! <laughs> and she's just splayed out on the floor. <gasps> what? Wow, that is a lot. That is a lot. I, I gotta say, okay. So from a trailer standpoint, again, an, an initial reactions, um, I'm still impressed. I'm still excited about this. I, I worry that it's given away too much. I, I worry that we're seeing too much of stuff, right? Like, I am surprised that they revealed Springtrap so early. I don't think they needed to. Um, just because you have that one shot with the golden bunny in the picture, I think that's enough to kind of tease it. I think revealing that Springtrap is in there, I think was, I, I think that's a reveal that you could very easily have saved for the actual movie and fans will freak out about it, but the mainstream, because because again, think about what this trailer is doing. It's, it's talking to multiple audiences. It's talking to us, the super fans who are like, literally going frame, I, I did it, It's we're at 70 minutes recording at this point. 70 minutes of a two minute trailer, right? Like we went frame by frame. I'm like, oh, and that's, oh, it's Balloon Boy, oh. And you know, but then you're also appealing to like the mainstream audience who has no idea what Five Nights at Freddy's is, and is just like, I want to see a spooky movie. I saw Megan, I like Blumhouse. And for me, there's so much in there already. Like, you've already got my ticket, period. But then you throw in the YouTuber cameo, cool. Like, I'm a Corey X Kenshin fan, I, I'm hyped about seeing him. Uh, I see a reference to lore bits and things and icon iconography from the series, I'm, I'm there. Like, you've, you've bought my ticket. Like. I was gonna go see this anyway. You've confirmed that I'm gonna go see this. I think at this point now the game it's playing is how do you attract normal people? <laughs> normal people who don't know the difference between Golden Freddy and Freddy. You know, like like that's that's the challenge here. And I feel like and I feel like the trailer does a good job of that, but I don't think you needed to to do quite as much with it, right? Uh, I think a lot of this, like, scary montage at the end does it. I think a lot of, like, the, I mean, literally the jump scare with the hand is enough to, to get, I think, a lot of people over the edge. So I think you can, and, and I don't think revealing Springtrap is drawing in those people. They're not like, oh, that's the killer and that's the horror. Like, I'm going to go. So to me, I see that and I'm like, oh, that, I think, was a bit too much information for everyone, for both audiences, I think. Everyone would have benefited from that being a surprise. But overall, um, really, really solid. Uh, I think this is one of those ones where if I was a casual like horror fan uh, and who just likes to go see horror movies in October or whatever, uh, this is one I would be intrigued about anyway because it's an interesting premise, right? And I think that's always the thing that's been interesting about Five Nights at Freddy's is at the end of the day, the premise is what sells it, is it's a haunted pizzeria where kids died it's so relate not relatable but it's it's so universal that everyone knows like a Chuck E. Cheese everyone has this like spooky restaurant and it's so differentiated from everything else in the space where you're so used to seeing like oh the killer roaming the hallways or attacking you in your home or whatever you know the haunted house this and that it it, it holds its own place that the premise alone, plus some spooky imagery and some showcasing of like, oh, there's interesting story here, sells it. I don't think you need to do a whole lot more to sell this to a casual audience. Uh, Mithrigan was a similar, like a completely original IP, came out of nowhere, and was just like, cool AI tech girl goes rogue and starts killing people. Like, 
I was sold on that. You, you show me like one or two cool shots from the movie and the cool shot in the movie that really took the internet by storm there was like her dancing and her like somersaulting down the hallways with like a, a paper shred or, or the like a guillotine paper cutter as they call it, the, uh, the uh, large paper cutters, like brandishing that. I'm like, oh, that's cool. I'm sold. And I think this does that without needing a lot of extra lore or fan service in there. Um, it's cool. I'm hype. What about you as, as a non-FNAF person? Are you going to join me? A hundred percent. Are you? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I, I forced Sam to watch Skin of a Rink with me. And, and it was awesome. And it was awesome. We had a good time. It was a very interesting movie experience. Yeah. I don't think this will be as challenging. Yeah. <laughs> no, you don't Which... think it's going to be us staring at, like, blank walls for, like, 30 <laughs> minutes at a time? No. Okay. I don't. Listen, I... like, <laughs> go to the basement. Go to the basement. Oh, I guess they're going to the basement now. Yeah, yeah. right? Uh -huh. No, I think this, if, if you want to say something really mean about somebody's movie, you say yeah. that it looks like a student film. Ooh, yeah. And so this has undeniably, in my mind, crossed the threshold from student film to, like, a real movie, which hey. a lot of, like, horror films are, are criticized of that especially. Yeah. Because they are, like, if somebody wants to make their first movie, mm -hmm. they go horror because it's cheap. Yeah, it's cheap. It's dark. Me. It's yeah. supposed to be easy to make. Uh, this does not do that. This is, yeah. like, a real which is not surprising from Blumhouse, but it looks awesome. Yeah, no, totally. And and I think that's one of the reasons why Scott took so long to make it, right? And and he moved from WB to this now, where I think he always knew the potential that this series had, and he always knew that if it was done right, you could do some really big things with it. And I think that was smart. I think, you know, if you're going to make a, a product, it makes sense to do it quality. And I think probably what he was feeling was that WB, who originally had the rights to this, he was going to get a student film, right? He was going to get, like, a cheaply made, kind of pushed out the, the pipeline, you know, Banana Splits movie or whatever. And and I think this, you clearly show that it's it's really crossed the threshold. So that's good. High praise. High praise from Sam. Absolutely. Cool. Uh, awesome. Uh, some interesting lore reveals, some interesting lore thoughts. I'm curious who David is. I think that's, like, when it comes to, like, big questions as we just spent the last hour analyzing this, I think some of the big ones... David, I, that's a real big Easter egg in there that seems to suggest lore things that I don't know. Um, I'm really curious about what's on those uh, blank sheets of paper. Like, I can't really think of what else it would be unless it's, like, some big, like, lore reveal something about the whole world or something like that. I'm curious what that is. Um, and, yeah, I mean, like, those are, those are the two that I, I leave with. It looks great. I'm excited. So uh, it's, it's cool to see people in it. Um so anyway, that is what I got for today. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching us make a hour, 15 minute video out of a two minute episode. Um, but I hope you're hyped. Let me know your thoughts and theories down in the comments below. Were you sold on the movie already? Were you gonna see it no matter what? And now you're just definitely gonna go see it. Has the trailer changed that at all? I feel like the trailer would have to do a lot wrong in order to cost the existing audience, right? Like you'd have, it, for me, you would have to have more shots of, of whatever that one, this, that, more, more, <laughs> in order to lose my ticket, you'd need more of these shots, and even then I'd still see it. Like, like, because it's a Five Nights at I'm, I'm seeing it, right? But uh, you'd need more shots of that. So anyway, uh, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you in the next episode. It's good to be back on the couch. Uh, and as always, remember, it wasn't a live stream, but it was a video, a video for you. See ya! Thank <laughs> you.